Hello, everybody. Um, today, I'm going to be speaking to you, um, giving you a kind of personalised um, recollection and reflection on diversity. You're kind of going to get my personal diversity history. I'm not really, I don't really want to speak about the quote that I'm showing you at the moment. It's just my provocation in response to yours, Skinder. I will read it, because I think it is useful for me to read it to you. It is an open secret that our cultural infrastructure was founded upon and still rests on a tower of elitism. In the UK, we cling for dear life to the old order, pay lip service to the notion of change, and quake in our boots at the thought and consequences of revolution. So I'm kind of introducing myself to you this morning as somebody that um, believes fundamentally in revolution. Um, I'm going to start with this image. Let's start here. So today I'm presenting to you as a 50-year-old woman who has, was born in Birmingham, has worked in Birmingham for quite a lot of my life, although I did spend some time in that London. Um, I confess to that now. Um, I am speaking both as an artist, um, a curator, and um, somebody that's kind of venturing into academia, uh, but also, I think, very importantly, as a child of the Windrush generation. So I'm one of those folk that was either born or raised here to parents that came from another place, that came in my, in my particular um, history, my parents came from a, an island called Jamaica, to Birmingham in the 1950s. Um, and my presentation today is going to be illustrated by images that are taken both from my personal um, photo album and some of key images of art that I think um, has something to say about the issues around diversity. And this first image is a day trip to Weston in 1972. I'm guessing it's 1972 because of the pink cardigan. <laughs> um, so on the image that you can see, um, the, the child, so, so to describe the image, um, it is a, it's a close-up image of a, a snapshot of what was a, um, a, a ride that was on the sands at Western Supermare. And anybody that's from Birmingham will know that as a landlocked city, there are really two places that you go to when you want to get to some sea from here. Yeah? So it's Rill <laughs> or Western Supermare. Okay, so in 1972-ish, my mom, my brother, who's older than me, my little sister, who's sitting in this image behind me, went to Western Supermare for a day trip and this image is very poignant to me because it's an image of myself and my sister sitting in this red wagon. It has the words fire brigade written on the side of it. Um, it is wooden. It has these beautifully carved um, um, firemen, um, wooden firemen, sort of stuck, uh, cut out and stuck onto the end of this wagon. And it's full of kids. And in this particular image, you can see two little colored girls, because I think we were still colored in 1972, <laughs> and who are clinging to each other. I think these two little girls look a little bit scared to death. And uh, also within the image, you can see what I think is a parent. I think the man there standing behind us with that slightly unfriendly look um, and I assume that my mum's taking this photograph and I assume that the unfriendly look is directed at her um, so he's a parent I think and one of these lovely boys sitting next to us next to the two colored girls is some boys one of them's a blonde boy one's got kind of mousy hair and I can't quite see the one behind so there's this image of to me this is multicultural Western Supermare. 
Um, this is a snapshot of my childhood. Um, so we, we're off, we, we've been out for the day, as all families do, to Western. And for me, this image is an interesting counterplay between being accepted and being not accepted, being of something and being excluded from it. Um, so I think that in this image I'm about eight and my little sister's about five. And we're on the fun, fun ride looking absolutely terrified and under siege. And um, in 2012, myself and some colleagues that were involved with the, the Black Arts Movement um, hosted, a, um, hosted a conference at Wolverhampton University, which was the site of the first conference that we'd done in 1982. Um, so it was 30 years later. Uh, and the image that I'm showing you is an image of a young curator uh, the curator is called Christine Ayin. She was born in Africa. She was raised in France. She now lives in London and, and practices as a curator there and is making exhibitions about um, uh, exhibitions by mostly women from all over the, di the diaspora. Um, she's currently working, in fact, um, with Lubaina Himid in the Making Histories Visible project, which is at Preston University. Uh, and the shot that is of her asking a question in the audience of that conference in 2012. So my work now, I see it mostly as research and writing and, and um, about ensuring that the work that I've done previously and the work of the Black Arts Movement is not lost to history. Um, and, and I'm coming across um, young artists, curators, and academics um, from all kinds of black backgrounds. But all of, what all of them have in common is that they can see that this particular period of history was quite important and that there's some interesting knowledge to be gained from reflecting on that work. Um, so although I started in a very cynical place, um, I still believe in change. Um, I still believe that change is necessary. Um, I was um, very honored to be invited to the memorial service for uh, Professor Stuart Hall, who passed last year. And um, one of the many things that, Pro Professor Stuart Hall was a, a, um, a professor of sociology who, uh, and one of his kind of um, major achievements was um, as director of the Center for uh, Contemporary Cultural Studies, which was here at Birmingham University. But he's written a great deal about race and about um, culture. And uh, one of the things that he, one of the many things that he would say, um, um, he became a champion of, of, of black artists. Even though he worked in, in sociology, he became quite a champion for the, for the practitioners. One of the things that he used to say was that, to reiterate, was that there were no guarantees. That if you take up a position and a life of working to make change, you have to do that because there is belief that change is important and that it can be made possible. What you can't do is map out a career tra trajectory that says, oh yeah, and change will happen in 2018. Um, and so having reflected on all of the things that have not worked, all of the changes that 18, I just was gonna change the world, there was no question. Um, and at 50, I still am gonna change the world, but I'm a little bit more focused about where I'm going to put my energy. Thank you very much.